Ooh. It's like a little a little Latin vibe to this song. I think it fits you. Let's do it. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome back to the Dreams to Reality podcast. I'm your host, Anibal Rodriguez, and this is episode 45. We are here in the lovely city of Pasadena, California. It's a beautiful day. We have a beautiful guest in the house. Today's guest, she is a model, an influencer, a Playboy centerfold, and an aspiring artist. Make sure you guys check out her website and make sure you check out all of her content. Please help me welcome the beautiful Danny Rose. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm excited as well. I'm going to go ahead and take off these headphones because you don't have yours on. Okay. But wait a minute. Actually, I, I like how <laughs> how I feel more locked in when I'm with the headphones because I'm like half deaf. You must but, be a uh, gamer. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I actually don't. I don't play any video games. Um, but do you feel more comfortable with me taking off the headphones or leaving them on? Um, just leave them on. Leave them on? All right, Good. cool. I'm going to leave them on. You seem like you want to keep them on, too. (laughs) (laughs) I kept on trying to get you to put on your headphones, but that hat is just too sick, man. Tell us a little bit about that hat. Um, So I collect these hats. They're um, called Charlie Horses. Charlie Horse. Yes, hence the... The Charlie horse. There you go. <laughs> and but this in particular, this hat, I had to have it because I saw Lady Gaga with it. So. Oh no way. Yes, that's why. <laughs> Are you a, a big Lady Gaga fan? I'm not a like a big fan, but um, I I you know. I like her. <laughs> okay. You're not a what are what are her fans called? She calls them a. Little monsters. Little monsters. You're not I a little monster. That. Kind of, just a you little are? bit. All just right, cool. Bit. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is, um, you know, I, I just barely uh, met you maybe like two, three weeks ago. Right. Uh, I had Jay Valentino on. And on the day that he came on, you and him had made a skit um, on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. which was hilarious. And then when he came, I, I guess you guys were hanging out. So you showed up and I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And yeah. then that's when I was introduced to you. Uh, but I've been following your page for the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I had no idea that we, we had some similar music taste i know i was i was shocked that you were shocked <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you don't look like a girl that's into like rock and stuff I, if you would have said uh lady gaga i'm like oh yeah yeah she's totally a a, a monster you would get it huh? <laughs> yeah. a monster <laughs> or whatever she calls them <laughs> yeah but yeah. your your um musical taste is pretty um pretty uh vast i guess you can yeah, say it's broad <laughs> and uh you also mentioned that you are also an aspiring singer um so tell us a little bit about that how long have you been uh, a singer and uh what are your goals with that um okay so the whole thing with the music um i was actually recording in sacramento where i'm from uh, probably about 10 years ago and no way. yeah and but my music was different then like and i was writing it and yeah. It was just, I had an idea, but I didn't know how to execute it. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, do you want to share the idea? Do you want to hold it close to you in case a producer is listening? And like, uh, any producer out there that can turn people's ideas into reality, make sure you hit up Danny Rose uh, so she can share her beautiful voice to the world. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, you know, I haven't been able to really sit down and figure out where exactly I want to go with music right now, but that was the whole reason why I went to the LA Film and Recording Academy when I got here to wow. LA. And I was studying to do audio engineering, but mm. um, that didn't work out as well. Yeah. <laughs> it just, um, it wasn't for me at that time. Yeah. I, I was getting pushed more to do, I felt like because I was female, to do more like gaming audio, mm-hmm. which was fine, but that's not what I w- initially went there for, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes in life, um, we have goals, we have plans, and, you know, we go after them. And then we realize as we're in it, you know, maybe this isn't the right thing for me, <laughs> you know, or maybe the world comes crashing and completely change your plan. Definitely. And you, you have to be uh, <laughs> flexible, you know. Yeah. You have to be flexible sometimes, and you have to be fluid with, uh, with the world and with the way things are because... I'll be honest, I've tried a bunch of different things too, and some, some things didn't, they didn't turn out the way I wanted them to, you know? But yeah. now you're, you're actually a, a really successful model. You have a, a long modeling career. You were just telling me you've been modeling for over 10 years. Yeah. And, you know, getting a, a, a contract with Playboy is not a, a light thing, you know? It's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, 
awesome thing you were able to do. So I'm curious on finding out a little bit more about your story, your journey of, you know, how you got into the modeling world. Mm. You know, um, I mean, you just mentioned right now you're originally from Sacramento. Yeah. Um, so did you start your career out there or tell us a little bit about that? So um, in Sacramento at that time, it was, and I think it, it was big out here in LA too, the whole like go-go dancing thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I was already like, I, I was already like into like dancing and stuff like that. So I've always been like a creative person. Yeah. So there's always got to be some way for me to have an outlet. I know that about me. So you're an artistic person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like creative though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds good too. <laughs> but um, so I was taking lessons out in Sacramento and then um, one day this lady came in and she was like, hey, like how old are you? Like you want to yeah. like really like do some costumes and she didn't tell me it was go-go dancing she just told me like um it's you know just dancing at, at these clubs these, these nightclubs and I'm like well, I'm yeah. like barely like 17. Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I was like but it sounds cool so anyways I got I got in with her and um she started booking me at these nightclubs and in Sacramento and all over the Bay Area and at that time there was like I don't know if it was here in LA but there was like teams I don't know. It sounds oh, like wow. really, <laughs> it was like very serious. Dancers? Yeah, it was very Damn, serious. You know, you know, there were gangs. Don't be, don't be lying. Like what go-go oh, dancing right? gang you from? <laughs> For real, it really felt like that sometimes. So anyone that, that sees huh? this, yeah, everyone, anyone that sees this knows what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> <laughs> from that time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what that came like was modeling because they needed to promote like the girls, you know, right. kind of like what goes on today. Yeah. So long story short, that's how it happened. It just was like the trickle effect. And yeah. then I was like, um, one, one competition I did, it was like this bikini competition. And, um, the, I guess the prize was that you were going to like get like this photo shoot and you're going to be in this calendar <laughs> yeah. and I won. Oh wow. <laughs> and were so you, were you trying to win? Kind of. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to take this. I mean, I was like, I, I really want to do this. Like, I, yeah. I love being in front of the camera. I feel like, you know, like my spirit animal comes out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so I won, and then that's kind of like how, like, I got booked for music videos, and then it was just like from there, bam, bam, bam. And then when I moved to L.A., I carried that, and I started meeting yeah. more people. And then also, too, like at that time, um, I had a cousin that was like really – like into the industry like she just was very good with like communicating with people and, no, and meeting yeah. people so me being her cousin she was always putting me on yeah how i would say yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um you know it was just just a trickle effect i feel like yeah i mean um i've been around models for some time and one of the the key things that i've noticed from successful models and models that are not successful is that one thing it's networking having yeah. the ability <laughs> to communicate with different people whether it's another model or it's a, a, a director or it's an artist or, or a rapper or whoever it is they are they know how to talk you know and they know how to network because your reputation is very 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 important in the industry that you're in you know <laughs> so for someone to be successful um you know as a model i feel that's a well obviously got to be beautiful too but <laughs> no i i do agree with you in that too because yeah. that is something like it is hard especially the type of modeling that i'm doing like i'm not a runway model like i'm not six yeah. one i'm i'm five three almost five four yeah and um, you know, my body type is, well, I feel like back in the day, my body type probably wasn't in, but yeah. now that I'm like, cause a little bit thicker, <laughs> it's really in now. <laughs> now I'm, now I'm in, Yeah. <laughs> but, back um, then it was like six, one super skinny, yeah. long legs, you know, you know, thin, thin neck and like long <laughs> neck. neck and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but I, I knew that like, like very on, I was like, okay, so I'm not going to be like six, one, I'm, I'm not a hundred pounds, but <laughs> But there was work for me, and so I, that's where I basically just started going where, you know, I was getting booked. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it does, I, I realized, too, that you don't have to be six one and 100 pounds to be a model. Like, there's other modeling, especially nowadays, like, with the internet and... Yeah, one of the topics that we talk a, a lot about on my show is authenticity and, and being yourself. You know, yeah. the problem with a lot of people is that it's good to aspire, it's good to have, you know, role models, and it's good to almost emulate people. Like, 
I'm a musician. You mm-hmm. know, when I before I even picked up an instrument, I would look at these artists or these bands, you know, on stage or like on TV or on the radio. I would mm-hmm. hear them, and I was in love with their music. I was in love with how they looked. You know, <laughs> I wanted to have long hair. I was a metalhead, right? So like, oh, I want to have long hair, and I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to like that guitar. I want to have that guitar, and that's okay because what it does, it allows you to to utilize your your um what's the word i'm looking for um the you utilize them as an inspiration to create your own thing you know but the problem that a lot of people have is that they replicate instead of you know creating their own thing like you said i'm I'm never gonna be six (laughs) feet you know i'm never gonna be this but you can still be successful in whatever you want to do as long as you're authentic and you have a something that you want to show to the world yeah i definitely agree with that i mean i the one thing I do find what's really hard is that like, oh, you're not a real model because you're not doing a runway or whatever. So, um, but other than that, like, I'm just like, I'm doing my own thing. Like I'm totally in my own lane, like yeah. <laughs> in every single way. Like, I don't think anyone could ever like say, oh, she's only like this, you know, cause yeah. uh, you can obviously tell by, by my music. <laughs> like, yeah. <you> yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. I feel that, uh, anytime, someone does any type of modeling when it comes to like um you know you're like a centerfold or your type of you know someone that shows a little bit more skin <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you, you do get typecasted you know like i yeah. just had a, a deanne munoz on who's a ex-porn star Love and her. we were we were talking about that <laughs> we were talking about how you know um she gives no shits, you know. She doesn't care that's what people I like think about her. her. I don't even know her, but that's why I like her. Yeah, same thing like you said. You stay in your lane, but at the same time, you have value to provide to the world. Yes. You know, and it sounds like you said there's there's a lot more layers to you than, you know, I'm just a, a Playboy a playmate. Or you eye know? candy. Or, or eye candy. There's more depth uh, to every person. Yeah. And, you know, everyone deserves uh, a chance, you know, to showcase what they, what they want. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that like me just being authentic and just being me in my lane, I think it also shows, well, actually I know for a fact because I've had people hitting me up all the time that are like, oh, like, um, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. Like there was this one girl on Twitter. She was like, I didn't even think you were going to respond. She was like, I, I, (laughs) how did you get into Playboy? Cause that's what she asked me. Yeah. And I, I just basically told her, like, yeah. you know, I, I gave her some pointers. I'm like, I'm not going to, I mean, I, who am who am I to be acting, you know, like, yeah, like I'm somebody because I, I don't, I don't ever carry myself like that and I never will. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why I invited you onto the show, <laughs> you know, is because I, uh, I wanted to know that same, that same question that she asked. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know, you know, because um, like I mentioned, getting, you know, a contract with Playboy is a pretty big deal because they're a, a huge company. And they're pretty much at the forefront of that industry. So what was that journey? Like, how did you get involved with with Playboy? And what exactly do you do with them? Um, Okay, so Playboy, I am a digital creator for them. So everything is online. Everything is digital. And um, they were going through, like, their beta version of what they what they would consider is like their only fans, I guess. Like okay. it's kind of like the same thing, but similar concept where you have like a, a, a subscription. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. And you sell content. So, um, in the beginning I was like, okay, so they're, they're looking for girls. So I just yeah. applied. And, yeah. um, at that time I was literally, I had just finished my first photo shoot from, you know, all the years of not shooting. <laughs> yeah. It was my very first one with um, Echo. Uh, how, how long ago was this? That shoot? Yes. With Echo, the Playboy one? Um, the one before Playboy. I, it, I think at the beginning of this year, maybe a little bit before then. Okay, so either early January or late December. Yeah, something like that. You had a I'm, photo shoot with <laughs> a photographer mm-hmm. by the name of Echo World. Echoes, Echoes World. Echoes World. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him on Instagram. I think, like, he shoots <laughs> all of, like, the major models. He, he does. Now He's I remember awesome. who it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know who it is. Yeah. He just, he shoots a, a Neanderthal stuff. Is that how you say your name? Yeah. 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 He's, stuff. he's done a bunch of different models, and he does really good work. So a shout out yeah. to Echoes World out there. Maybe we could have him on the yes. show someday. Oh, you should definitely get him. Um, <laughs> so you shot with him. And this is what I tell people about, you know, creating your content. I don't care what you are. You're a model. You're a singer, a songwriter. You're whatever you do. You have to always put on the best possible content. 
you Absolutely. know, and that means investing in yourself, investing in your business, investing in your body. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to land a contract with Playboy if you don't have a, a you know, something to show. Yeah, you know? exactly. And when they see your content and it's professional, it's clean, it, it represents the image that they like, then you're going to get those opportunities. The problem is people just put out, you know, trash sometimes and you're like, this is not good. You know, <laughs> like you, the quality is yeah, like your quality has to be good. And I tell people the way you do things is the way you do things. Yeah. Attention to detail is crucial. The difference between a professional and an amateur is called detail. Yeah. Attention to detail. Like, why is that hot? That hat more expensive than like some basic hat you get like at JC Penny? They're made out of the same material. <laughs> yeah. They're made out of the same thing. There's no difference in the cost of the of the actual product. Right. The reason you pay more for certain things is the attention to detail. That little insignia right there is going to cost a lot more. <laughs> you know does. the way that they that they 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 you know form the hat mm-hmm. way different. You know yeah. so. Everything that anyone is out there, if you're looking to accomplish, try to get better at it. A little bit better, oh, yeah. a little bit better. Work with, with better things, like collaborate with better people, and eventually those opportunity come. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's good advice, actually, because if if you do, like, what I did and stopped, like, in the middle of nowhere, yeah. like, you're not obviously going to get better. Like, And I don't, I don't want to say I stopped. I, I just started working on a different direction. But, um, yeah, with, with Playboy, though um, – to go back to that is, yes. is that uh, they they hired me and you yeah. Know, so they saw. Did you send them uh, the the pictures and stuff, or did they just go on your page and see them? No, I had to send the pictures. I, I actually did apply. Um, okay. And they were like, okay, but this was in the very very beginning of it. Yeah. Like they were they were barely like letting anybody just apply. Yeah. And um, but now I think like people can apply and stuff like that. I think even like. Like, they have guys on there now, too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Let me go apply real quick. I'm going to hit up Echo to take some pictures there of me. There you go, huh? <laughs> you already know the routine. You know? Well, you know, I'm a photographer, too, you know? <laughs> I'm going to take funny. my own pictures. <laughs> That's hella funny. Guys, subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> hey, you know, no judgment. No, no judgment. And you know what's crazy? Like, I wish I would have started at least my OnlyFans, like, in the pandemic. But I was working on, like, other stuff. So... It's crazy to see, like, how Playboy is, like, doing what, what like, OnlyFans has been doing, like, yeah. selling content and stuff. Yeah. But even before, even before there was Playboy, and I think even, like, OnlyFans, there was there was girls like me. Like, there was other websites that we were working on. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you we know, weren't even cam doing anything. modeling. <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. Uh, like, cam modeling and, and, you know, models having their own platform has been around forever, as long as there's been the internet and websites, you know, but before it wasn't like a company that, you know, owned that site. It was yeah. like, you go to, for example, Deanna Munoz.com and True. you pay a membership <laughs> directly to her and you have her web page and her content that she puts on there. Mm-hmm. But now it's a little different because you have a platform, you have a website that, that has the ability to, to get more features. Yeah. You know, like when you go on a OnlyFans or a Playboy, uh, you know, website, there's a lot more features that you can work with where you can yeah. connect with your fans a lot easier. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you're utilizing their platform to grow yours, you know. So well, they do all the marketing. Like, exactly. that's why that's, that's why they reel us in. But yeah. the the company that we were, that most of us were working for, like we, they weren't allowing any nudity or any, any sexual things. It was like, literally we were selling like what you see on Instagram. Yeah. And then they switched it over, like right when the pandemic had ended and then we were like, what the hell? We might as well just <laughs> go to OnlyFans then. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question to, um, to you about that mm. because I mean, you go on freaking Instagram and like <laughs> girls are showing like almost, almost everything, you know, yeah. like, like see through bras and this and that. I feel like uh, sometimes girls have to like get a little bit crazier on their exclusive pages because of the amount of content that's allowed on just regular free stuff. Like on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Twitter's do like you, everything. Do you, do you do you feel the same way or are your thoughts different? Okay, well first I will say um I'm a solo creator, so um I don't I don't interact with anybody else like I don't do like sex tapes, I don't do girl on girl or anything like that. Not to say that I would never, but right now that's where my boundaries are. And I definitely suggest anybody, if they're going to be in this type of industry doing that work, you need to establish with yourself your boundaries. Yeah. So um, I I just, for me, um, 
when I see something like that online, to me, I'm already thinking like, okay, so then she's doing a lot more on her OnlyFans because obviously she has to make, or they have to make the money. Right. So, yeah, when you see that, I mean, she probably, or whatever, they're, that person is still doing, probably doing more. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. You, <laughs> you know, that's a like, good uh, indication of knowing that. But <laughs> then again, I mean, look at, I mean, I have some pictures on my IG where, that are very risky, and yeah. I don't do any of those extra things, which, like I said, I'm not closing the door to that, but right now, that's my boundaries. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, like I said, it's important to uh, <laughs> be authentic, you know, and uh, yeah. sometimes if you don't feel in alignment with something, you know, it's it's better to not do it, but sometimes I also feel like the uh, the financial rewards are, <laughs> are, are kind of like a uh, <laughs> temptation for a lot of people. You know, it's easy mm. for them to get involved in a different world and go down a different uh, road that they initially anticipated because of that. Like, and yeah. <laughs> it is I don't want to get, I don't want to get too <laughs> into detail. Um, but I remember someone that I knew as well that, you know, right when the only started, they started one yeah. and it was super like innocent, you know, it was just like, just like picture, bikinis, bikinis or, so, or and like stuff like that. Huh? Yeah. But yeah. the money was so lucrative that it just became a whole other thing. They advanced to other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I it's see a, it all the time. Like it's, <laughs> a, it's a it's a slippery slope, as we like to say, you know. But at the end of the day, you have control of your life. You have uh, control of your actions, and um, you have to be okay with the consequences that come with your actions. You know, so yeah, you really have to think about that because it's the internet and nothing goes Once away. Once it's out there, <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. Don't Google my name, guys. You might find <laughs> something you don't like <laughs> or like, or you might like <laughs> you it. Might I like don't it. know. <laughs> That's funny, but uh, yeah. but yeah. So um, back to Playboy. So you shoot with Echoes World. They see you. You send out your information to them. It was mm. in the beginning, uh, which is kind of cool because. Um, I'm still, like I was telling you earlier, I'm still like in the infancy of everything. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, it's, you got it's me at a brand, good time. It's brand new. <laughs> you know, you, you started it this year. Um, and you mentioned that you took a break from, from modeling for some time. We were talking about it before we hit oh, record yeah. on these. You were, you were, you were out for about eight years. Mm -hmm. um, what caused you to kind of stop? I know you mentioned you were doing other things. And what was the catalyst to get you back into what you're doing now? Um... Okay, so I, I did get into a relationship. I got into two rela two back to back relationships. <laughs> okay, is Both. this um a bef before you stopped? No, this was like I was modeling. I was doing a I was doing a lot of modeling, yeah. and then um, a lot of work. And I got with somebody, and it's not that he was he wanted me to stop it. I mean, but it was just I was also tired. Like I was getting yeah. burnt out, and yeah. I and I felt that. And so um, I was like, let me try something new. Let me, mm -hmm. I really like fitness. Like this is when like all the girls on IG were like. Fitness models. Yeah, all that. So I was like, yeah. I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just was like, I guess kind of wanted some, a different way of things, I guess. Yeah. I was just looking for something new. And then I got comfortable with that and got into another relationship. It was extremely toxic. <laughs> Dang, I hate those. <laughs> so what that did to me was. You know, I didn't. I didn't want to even be on online. Like, I didn't want to do anything like that. So, was it you didn't want to, or you weren't allowed to? I wasn't allowed to. That one was like, you are not. You're not <coughs> gonna do any of that. Like, you're yeah. not gonna like. At that time when I met that person too, um, I was still. Oh yeah, I used to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was dancing, and he. That when I had met him at that time, he was like, "You're not dancing anymore." Like, yeah. He, he didn't even want me to work. Like that's mm. how like crazy it was. So yeah, when when that had happened, I was like, well, there goes that. Like I'm not gonna like I, if I want to be in this relationship, this is how I have to be. And you so, chose a relationship. And I chose a relationship. So. Okay, how long did that last? Uh, that one was four years. Four years. Okay, so for those four years, you pretty much were on lockdown. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Twenty three and one, huh? Yeah. Well, I met. <laughs> you get one hour to be free. <laughs> like it I was. Go, go it, walk in the grass and come back in. I don't even think I had any free time. <laughs> Damn. Like, like it 24 was like. Twenty four seven lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a lot older than me, so I kind of yeah. felt like maybe there was like some insecurity of like. Yeah, I can see that. You know, the thing about men when they want to control a woman financially, mm -hmm. it's because they're scared of them leaving them. Because oh, yeah. what happens is if you're making more money than him, then you don't really need him. So the financial aspect of hey don't work don't do this don't do that <laughs> it means i you need him 
You yeah. need him to survive. You need him to eat. You need him to drive. You need him to to dress everything. yourself. Everything. 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 So you are, you know, um, you're connected to him and you can't separate. That's exactly and what he's doing. It's a, it's a <laughs> manipulation tactic. And, and yeah. you know, both men and women do it. And uh, it's not just men that do that, um, you know, manipulate someone to control them and to hold them, you know, in a certain place. But Put the, you in a box. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the problem with that is uh, if that's not what you want, because to be honest, some people like that. Some people yeah, want, that's true. you know, you, I'll, you take care of me and I won't do shit. I'll just be at home and I'll I have the babies and all that and I have to work. And I'll, a lot of people want that, you know, but for the people that don't. And I can hear from the sound of what you've been saying. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to say, you know, like artistic. What was the other word you used? Creative. creative. A creative person <laughs> wants freedom to express yeah. themselves. And if someone is preventing you from doing that, you start to build up a lot of resentment and That's hatred and hatred t- towards that person because you feel like they are dimming your light. They are not allowing you to be authentic to yourself. And eventually uh, it, it's going to end very, very badly. Um, so I'm glad you got out of that <laughs> because, <too>. uh, <laughs> you know, those kind of relationships, uh, they can set you back for a long time, especially when it comes to financially, you know, if you're not allowed to work, you're not allowed to do this. It, it, and it, it became dangerous yeah. and, and very, can, and very traumatic for me. So, um, you know, I've done a lot of work. I, I mean, I've, I've been single for quite some time and I, I've had to do a lot of work with like myself. Yeah. I'm still working on myself, you know, because yeah. of that situation. But, um, uh, do you want to get into it or no? We could do a, that's fine, a little bit. I'm totally so okay. So, are with you it. talking about more emotionally, psychologically, financially? What way did you have to work on yourself? Every way, every single okay. way from ground zero. Like it was, um, it was from ground zero. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm pretty um, knowledgeable when it comes to toxic relationships. Are you? I'm sorry. <laughs> and relationships in general. <laughs> I've done a lot of research on them, you know, so, and, and I've experienced them as well. Yeah. So, uh, I, I understand. That once you leave a traumatic relationship or a toxic relationship, you know, it, there is a, 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 a time that you need to yeah. heal yourself. Yes. Because essentially, <laughs> literally, the word toxic is you, you're being poisoned. You know, it we, is. We, call it, we call it the poison drip, which is a little bit of poison each day, <laughs> a little bit of poison each day. And eventually, you're like, oh, I'm starting to feel sick. Like, this relationship is making me sick. I really you, did feel you start sick, though. To, yeah, you literally <laughs> feel sick. And uh, your 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 drive starts to go away, you know your your self esteem starts to go away. That was a like, big part uh, for me too. Your self worth starts mm. to go away, and uh, eventually y- you are just like a puddle of mud and just depressed. Like, what am I? <laughs> yeah, you doubt everything. You're like walking on eggshells. You you feel unsure of yourself, mm-hmm. and until you be like, man, this isn't who I am, and you snap out of it. it it's a it's a hard place to be in. But uh, the freedom to be able to create the life that you want and utilizing that pain and suffering, you can use it as fuel. You oh, know? I definitely have. I definitely have used that. And it wasn't like for me, like, I'll be honest, like it wasn't like I was in love or anything like that. It was yeah. just a situation where he was there when that's what I needed. You know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't like when we broke up, like it was like, Oh, I'm heartbroken. It was more like, thank God, like this was really bad. Like, yeah, this was really toxic. And I'm not saying like it's like you were saying, like some people like being in those type of relationships yeah. where they're taken care of. I would have been probably OK with that. But there was a lot of bad. So yeah. that set me back so much. Like I couldn't think of any way to like pick myself up. Like I literally had to figure it out. And it took me a while to even go shoot, like yeah. to even do that. And, and, and I wasn't even thinking of like working with playboy or trying to like do anything with modeling it just was like echo was like no like he was like like a big factor and another uh photographer in louisiana that really woke me up they were like girl Mm. like what are you doing like like get out there like you you have it like yeah but you know for so long i was told i wasn't so um it's really hard to like tell yourself that when you've been told that for so long. <laughs> yeah, it's your self-esteem, your self-worth, your uh, internal dialogue, you know, and you'll see it big time when someone has a high self-esteem and someone that doesn't. And it's crazy because yeah. it, it doesn't really matter about the external. I've seen some like <laughs> thick and I'm not talking about just like <laughs> thick. I'm talking about like some big girls, you know, that are not very attractive. Mm-hmm. 
but their aura and the way that they carry them is like, oh, you can tell. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. They're I, extremely I love that confident. Stuff. They're like, they're like, they're like sometimes even too confident. Like you yeah. need to turn that down a little bit because you're like, <laughs> I need to get like that. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> and then you'll see people that are, you know, on the outside seem like they have it all together, but their mm-hmm. internal dialogue is extremely negative. I know. And by nature, <laughs> most people are, are going to, look at the negative first before they look at the positive. That's just human nature. Yeah. You know, you do, you do 10 nice things for a person. Mm-hmm. They won't say nothing. You, you do one thing that you mess up and they'll tell everybody, you know? <laughs> so true. <laughs> so they'll only remember the bad, but they don't remember the good. And that's, that's just human nature. So our own thoughts are the same way. We don't really give ourselves enough credit for what we have been through and what we accomplish. Right. And what mm-hmm. you need in order to succeed long-term mm-hmm. is a bunch of little wins. A bunch of little wins. And I tell people like, man, set a long-term goal. Ultimately, this is my long-term goal. This is what I want to do. And then create a plan and have little goals on the way there so that you can celebrate those little goals and then keep on pushing. Because the problem is that people set up these goals. Like you said, you're in fitness, right? I was a a trainer as well. Uh I'll have people that come in and like, I want to lose 100 pounds. Like like, right now. Yeah. I'm like, like, look, man, I'll be honest with you. It's going to take you a while to do that. Yeah. You have so much bad habits right now. Like if you set that goal and I, and I, you know, you're, you're probably going to quit after the first month. And of course they would, because they keep on looking like, man, I've been training for three months. And I've lost five pounds. I'm like, look, the most important thing for you right now is consistency. You yeah. haven't worked out in 10 years. You're out of shape. Like for you, don't even look at the freaking scale. I just need yeah. you. Can you please just make it into the gym three times a week, four times <laughs> a week? Just the commitment part. And you don't even have to work out. <laughs> just freaking sit there. I, I came to the gym, you know, in the beginning. I'm not saying that for everybody. Yeah. But you know, you have to at least set your goals and be proud of them, you know, uh, of, of the accomplishments you make. And little wins, little wins, little wins, little wins eventually become big wins, you know, and that's how you accomplish long term goals. So for you, what are your long term goals? What do you ultimately want to do? Because in the beginning, you're like, and I'm in a point right now where I can go anywhere. I'm like, that sounds <laughs> awesome. But what do you want to do? Um, Ultimately, like I just want and I want. Can you put the mic a little bit? Oh, there we go. Right here. Okay. I was talking to your uh, clavicle. Side. <laughs> Does it need to go up more? That's fine right okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Um, my long-term goals are, um, like I said before we started, um, I'm getting out of, like, teaching classes in person. Yeah. Um, I, w- I want to venture into teaching online. Okay. Um, but in particular, um, the bar classes, because that's r- really where I'm at right now. Like, So explain the bar classes for people that don't know what that is. Oh, it's um, the best way I can explain it is Pilates and ballet put together. <laughs> and basically, um, I enjoy it. I'm pretty sure a lot of other people enjoy it, too. And I, I think it's going to be a good route for me because... Um, I, I need, I feel like I need to teach. Like, I always feel like I need to, like, be helping somebody. And um, that's going to be my my outlet, I think, for that. And another goal would be um, I've, I want to push my store a lot more. Um, I, I definitely want to be able to basically have a store everywhere if I can. <laughs> yeah, the, the beauty about... Uh the but World Wide Web, the internet <laughs> is that you are everywhere. You know, if you if you have access to the internet, I mean, you you have the ability to connect with anyone. If you have a product, a service, an idea, something that you think has value, and you can showcase that, you have an outlet. You know, which exactly. is why I tell people like today's age, um, it's a lot easier to become successful because if you want to do something, the information is out there. Get okay. it, create a plan, and go after it. And then reiterate your plan until you become successful with it. You know, stay consistent with it. So you said you want to get um, your your website or your store. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little about the store because you haven't mentioned that oh, at okay. all. Oh, okay. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, she's been on sleep mode too. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know you're a renaissance woman. You do a do little you bit of all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I have a little bit of everything. Um, I cook too. Oh, damn. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um don't so make me fall in love. Don't Just fall kidding. in love with me. I don't date. <laughs> You're like, I'm toxic. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> no, it's you guys. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. No, oh, okay. Kidding. Yeah. That's that's the number one sign of a toxica. There's nothing wrong with her. It's everybody right? but me. Exactly. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, 
But my store, so it's a combination of some designs that I have made myself. It's a clothing store. Oh, yes, it's a clothing store. Sorry, yeah. my bad. It's a <laughs> women's clothing store. Is it a, what's the, because girls say they have a boutique. What's the difference between a boutique and a store? I don't know. I, I think it's just like a, <laughs> just like a marketing thing or something. <laughs> I think so, to be oh, honest. Okay. I don't know. But for me, like, I, it, mine's just a store. Like, yeah. um, I have no, in, no intention um, to basically, like, take it, how do I say this? I don't think I want to have a, like a brick and mortar. Okay, you don't have a storefront. You want to no, have no. an online store. I want to keep it online. Yeah. Now, do you design the clothing um, or how? what's the concept on the business? Um, so it's changed a couple times. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so when I initially started, I, of course, I shot everything with Echo. Yeah. I hired models. I had a whole, like a whole production. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was cool. It was a really good experience. And um, I... I just wanted more like casual loungewear. Okay. That's where I was going. But now like who I am and so much growth that I've done, like I, I feel like I need to express myself through the store. So um, definitely like hats. We're going to, yeah, I was going to say, we're going to have, it's, it's definitely like cowgirl like inspired. Cause you know how I am. Like yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm country as, <laughs> I'm not gonna, can I say, can I cuss? Yeah. <laughs> I'm country as fuck. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's definitely going to have that. And, um, I, you know, some of my idols are, you know, Shania Twain. Yeah. Um, I remember you mentioned that. You're like, mm -hmm. your style of singing is like Shania Stevie Twain. Nicks. So oh, my store, Phoenix. you do, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so you know that that's where my store is going. It's going to yeah. have a lot of like that top, that, I can't even talk now, that type of look. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I mean, I obviously already have it in my head. Like, I, I don't want to be doing OnlyFans and Playboy, like, yeah. forever. And, you, and I mean... You can if you want, but for me, like that's not my long term goal. Um, I'll be completely honest <laughs> with you and with everybody out there. That world has a uh, a time frame, you know, expiration because date. an expiration date. <laughs> you should have your escape plan. You know, absolutely. There's certain things in, that that we have to do in order to survive and to pay the bills and to use as a stepping stool or step. A step to get to where we want to be mm -hmm. but it is not the ultimate goal you know no. and <laughs> I, I tell people this all the time like it's okay to do certain things for something like i want to start a business i want to do that like bro you don't have two pennies to rub together like <laughs> you figure it out <laughs> how are you gonna buy anything you can't even afford a logo you know it's like, <laughs> you can't do anything um so you have to grind it out you know yeah. some people have to like do uber on the side some yeah. people have to like get another two three jobs you know so the way i look at it whenever you are trying to escape the matrix which is the rat that race is what it is. you know <laughs> it, it, you're, you're trying to get ultimate freedom you have to act like it like yeah. when i'm at job i'm working but at the same time as soon as i get out of a job i am I am digging my way out of this freaking prison, you know. <laughs> the guards ain't looking. I'm, 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 I'm digging, I'm here. digging, you know. I'm trying to figure shit out. I'm trying to, like, plan things out. The problem is that people get comfortable and they get trapped in yep. and, and this little cocoon and they think that they're safe. Yeah. But they're really not, you know. No, there's because no your safety job, net. <laughs> your job can fire you any day. You know, there could be a global pandemic, COVID-6 or whatever. Like, about COVID-6. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is at that time, you know, anything that you could get in a car accident, there's a bunch of things that can happen in the world that can drastically change what you're doing. And if you don't have an escape plan, it's going to be a, a pretty tough situation. Yeah. So I tell people like, hey, man, whatever your goal is, cool. But you have to you have to do certain things sometimes just to get you there, you know. So yeah. I'll tell people like, hey, if you want to do OnlyFans, that's up to you. You know, yeah. remember, you take your own uh <laughs> you have to, you know, you have to take the, the consequences that come with it. But at the same time, if it's going to get you to make some income to use and invest in something else, like, hey. I see it all think? the time. People with only fans do that. And then I also see people where I'm just like, you're not, you're, I, I mean, I don't know if you're not doing anything, but it looks like you're not doing anything else, yeah. you know. And I I am very You much, can also get comfortable in that world. Yes, because <laughs> the money's fast yeah. to some degree. But for me, like. I feel like I'm somewhat an old soul. I was raised more with my grandparents. So I I feel like I've seen, like, what it's like to get older, you know? Yeah. Not to say, like, there's any rush for me. I can feel me. it. I can feel it. I wake up in the morning, <laughs> like, ah, my back, my neck, my neck and my back. But if you don't <laughs> plan to be old, yeah. you know, it. I've seen some pretty bad things happen. And yeah. so 
Anyways, that's a little drastic, but <laughs> is it though? You know, no, it's, it's a <laughs> <Is> reality. It? <laughs> so I'm a, like, I already, I'm already knowing, like I'm, I'm milking, you know, everything online right now, but that's why I go back to the whole bar thing yeah. because you can, this is a, such a gentle workout yeah. that you could do it when you're pregnant. You could do it, you know, as an elderly person or yeah. whatever. So, and then at the same time, like for me, like I just know me, like I have to help. Yeah. Like it's just in me. And, and sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Um, but I just know for me, like I need something to where I can be creative and I can teach and I feel like I'm helping somebody, you know? Yeah. So for me, I think that's where the end game for me is. I mean, I could branch off so much with that. Um, right now I'm just like practicing a lot. I mean, I've been practicing for like the last year, but yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm looking into where to get certified and stuff like that. Okay. So that's the next step for me. But in the meantime, like I'm still young, like I can still work, you know, you know, this stuff online. So, and I yeah. enjoy it. Like I, I do enjoy a big part of it. Um, I love like any, anything that has to do with like just um, online marketing, anything like that. Yeah. And being creative and creating content. Oh, that's like my thing. Have you ever had <laughs> any, uh, any uh, aspiring models or anybody reach out to you, you know, asking you for tips and ideas and stuff like that? Um, sometimes we, I mean, we all talk, you know, like yeah. we see each other. So like, I, I mean, I have girls that are like, you know, following me and like, they're, they're way bigger than I, than I am. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're watching each other. That's kind of like how we, we learn, I guess. Yeah. But, um, I get hit up a lot. I mean, obviously, cause I have only fans, but to basically like collaborate with girls and guys like, and, and they're like big names, <laughs> like, mm. but I have, I, you know, I'm just nice and I decline because that's, like I said, oh, that's my want, boundary. They want to have sex with you. <laughs> yeah. They want to, like, there's a couple guys that, I mean, more than a couple, but there's guys and girls that are like in the millions followers and they hit me up and I'm just like, no, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm a solo creator. Yeah. <laughs> they're, no and they're, they're probably like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like I said, I'm, I established my boundaries because I do have an angle. I know where I'm going. I know what I want. Yeah. And um, that's not part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. That you said you, you set your boundaries and uh, you you're sticking to, to them. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So um, the website for the store, you said right now it's a... Uh, oh. Is it, is it active right now? Yeah, it's active. It? Okay, cool. So She's the website. Always active. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so prettybaddies.com. Uh, that's spelled P R E T T I E. And then baddie is B A D D I E dot like com. Mm -hmm. um, and what what is your perfect client for your store? What would you say is your perfect client? Um, I would say the. You think oh. my, there we go. Oh, it, was on, it was on your neck again. Oh. <laughs> it loves my neck. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry. I, you know, you know, I mic. joke. I'm I joke. <laughs> um, um, so the perfect clientele would be just somebody who is. Is it both male and female? No, just, well, let's see, you know. We could we could market to anybody, you know. That's I, I'm not going to say just for female or male because I I do have a lot of friends that are um, like in I, the LGBT. Yeah, they identify oh, differently, okay. so I don't want to like go there with that. Um, yeah, a it's bit. all good, <laughs> but it's more of a feminine vibe. Uh, yes, definitely. Okay, cool. And um, and basically, I I don't know. It's more like a little bit of everyday stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely glamorous, so <laughs> it's okay. gonna be. It's basically my closet, but. You know, my store. All right, guys, go look at <laughs> her Instagram. See all her style. If you resonate with her style, you're definitely going to love her website and her store. Now, the reason why I asked you about what's your perfect client is, uh, you know, I have a, a digital marketing company mm. and I shoot commercials for businesses for social media marketing and just pretty much any type of marketing. Mm -hmm. And the first question I will ask any business <laughs> is, you know, what is your target, your your target market, your ideal client. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you are doing any type of marketing or promoting a product, it should always be to your audience. Right. You know, if I'm in the business of toys, I'm probably not going to go to a senior citizen home and be like, hey guys, you know, you want to do this? <laughs> like if I'm whatever business you're in, you, you will be more successful mm -hmm. if you target to your audience. So the first thing is knowing who is my client? Who is my ideal client? It's a uh, 
boys and girls between the age of 18 and 45 mm -hmm. that are in uh, active lifestyle that like bright colors and that do this and do that. And, and then your, your color palette, your branding, your um, advertising money, everything that you do should be specifically for that target audience. Yeah. If you start to advertise to other things, you're pretty much wasting your time, you know, yeah. and there's been, Millions and millions and millions of dollars spent on, you know, studying, uh, marketing and advertising and all that, and all, <laughs> all that stuff. And they know exactly what to do when it comes to get people to, to move. Yeah. And I, what I did, I, I spent my time looking at successful marketing companies, looking at successful businesses, did the homework. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then replicating a lot of the stuff that they do. So it, it's good to look at big companies like Nike and look at companies like Coca-Cola, you know, Coca yeah. Playboy, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, yeah, and, Playboy. <laughs> and then you can see that every company has their style, yeah. has their brand, has their, their type of clientele, mm -hmm. even music, uh, you know, like I was talking to you about, <laughs> I'm a metalhead and I used to go, I still go to concerts all the time and it's like, 95 percent dudes you know and then the two girls that are there with their boyfriend that hate their life they're like why is that so guy growling funny to me, though. <laughs> you know it's like they know their target audience yeah. you know it's young men that are aggressive and want to let out some anger and they're gonna go mosh pit yeah and, that was gonna and say it's too. heavy music and it's like there's a certain vibe it's a frequency and attraction is that the way that you get clients is through attracting them mm -hmm. you can't force things on people and be like Buy this, buy that. Oh yeah, do this. People There's be no like, way. Get the fuck out of here. It's like, hey, I like what you're doing. I'm going to support you. Or hey, I like that hat. Where did you get it? I want to wear it. You know, I like your earrings. You? I like your jewelry. <laughs> I like your style. I like your your presence. I like something about you yeah. that I want to do. And then I can create my own thing from yours. So some people might take your hat and put a different a different style of clothing with it, but mm. they like that hat, you know? So it's very important for you guys out there. If you're looking to create a business or, or get more clients or get whatever, know your target audience and market specifically for them and hit me up to record your commercial. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but yeah, but the, one, the shameless drop, <laughs> There you go. you got know, you got to do it every once in a while. Um, but good. one thing that's funny is, uh, you know, we were talking the other day, um, cause I see that you have a, a gigantic dog. <laughs> And princess. I'm a, I'm a princess is your dog's name. That's her name. Okay. And, uh, it's a, a cane corso, right? Yes. She's an Italian Mastiff. Oh my God. How much does she weigh? So I thought she was close to 200, oh but, but she's, 200? but she's not, she's like, oh. uh, she's like a little over a hundred. Okay. I was yeah. like 200. No, no, no. But she's huge though. I used to have a dog. He was a, <laughs> he was a black lab and he was like 80 pounds and he was ginormous. I'm like, oh. so I was like 200 pounds. That's like. <laughs> like bigger than some guys <laughs> she she's almost like she weighs yeah she's pretty big but yeah those are big uh dogs that are i wouldn't want to do anything to uh rob the house with have somebody like that or do anything she crazy she is so protective, <laughs> Very protective over me yeah, yeah. and it's crazy because it's like okay so i know i told you the other day like you know how like i'm not dating because yeah. i i really am not dating like i'm yeah. just focusing on work but when i was dating um it was kind of funny because like you know, I can't just bring people over. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, yeah. she, <laughs> uh, she will, is like. Is she uh, territorial? Yes. Like, yes. this is my house. Like, who the hell are you? Yeah. Like, I have to, like, do it a certain way. Like, I have to, like, walk walk her out wa and walk them in together. Like, yeah. it's a whole process. And, <laughs> and that's why, like, it was funny because I, I was talking to this guy. And anyways, like, he had not, we had stopped talking. Yeah. And, um. And he was trying to come back. And I was like, well, you're going to have to stick around for more than like, because he was like, well, you don't even bring me to your house. <laughs> yeah, like you don't want to come here. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I just barely started talking to you. Yeah. I was like, and, and I had to explain to him about the dog. And I was like, so you better stick around more than two weeks. <laughs> because yeah. once she knows you, like, yeah. that's it. And I have her for protection reasons. So, yeah. um, but she's extremely protective. Like, yeah. I remember one time I had, and I've taken her everywhere. Like mm -hmm. I've taken her to Vegas bars, you oh, know, wow. I drink with her. <laughs> <laughs> you drink. Yeah. Take a sip. <laughs> she's my baby. Yeah. So, I get it. I so get it. I, um, she's really good with that. But one time we were in Hollywood having brunch and she, this guy was coming around to give flowers. Yeah. And so I was going to buy one. And so he went to, like over the table to like give it to me. Yeah. 
and she went after him. Oh, she dang. went after him, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't, I've never seen her do that before. Like, she's not normally like that. Like, I was, you know, oh like God. when you have a bad kid in, in, in public and you're, like, apologetic because yeah, your kid's yeah, being bad. Like <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. my God, wow. I'm so sorry. But um, that's the love of my life. Yeah, it's funny because uh, <laughs> I'm a huge dog lover, but I told her we're, like, completely opposite. I had, like, I a tiny little Yorkie. He was, like, four pounds. Oh my god! <laughs> when we got when we first got him, he was like, like he literally, he was like. I used to have a Yorkie. Tiny. He was probably like the size of this. They're little, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a teacup, uh, teacup Yorkie. Oh, so he's so cute. The biggest he got was about this big, you know. And same thing, I would take him everywhere, you know. Well, Anytime yeah. I ate, we'd get him his little meal and stuff like that. <laughs> Anywhere I was, he was with me. So I connect with you because of the, the love for animals uh, as yeah. well, <laughs> you know. But I, I really want to thank you, you know, for, for coming on the show today and sharing your stories, sharing your insight. Um, is there any tips or advice you would give to a, an aspiring model? Um, what are, let's say, your your top three tips Um to anyone that wants to uh, accomplish some of the things that you have? I would say the number one thing is to be consistent. But that's like with anything across the board. Right. When you're not, you have to be consistent. Um, the second thing would be if there's a lot of people that say they're photographers, but they're not. You know, yeah. you got to do your research. You got to like, and, and it's great now that we have all this social media yeah. and the internet because you can do your research. You can figure yeah. out like who's really, you know, who. I've seen way <laughs> too many forensic files to know this. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I love forensic files. Yeah, that's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Don't uh, get a photographer from Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, don't. Or even like, or like, I, I noticed that now since I'm jumping back in the game, like girls have hit me up and they'll be like, um, "Hey, this clothing brand hit me up. Like, yeah. I see that you follow them." Mm -hmm. um what's what's the deal like are they some yeah. creepers or what's going on <laughs> yeah one thing as well is uh there's a lot of scam artists out there that will pretend to be some kind of brand that wants to you know collaborate with yeah you they'll or, go that far <laughs> and what they're gonna do is essentially hack your account and you know there's girls that happen to them all the time they lose their ig because they click some link like oh <laughs> we want to make you uh, this or that so it, it's it's real easy to do some research there's google you know you, you, can, you can look at someone's page before don't <laughs> click any any links in your messages unless you know this person is legitimate yeah. and i tell people I, I could i could spot a scam a mile away me but, too i feel like <laughs> but i'll be like i'll ask for referrals references you know i'll reach like same thing i'll reach out to someone yeah hey do you know this person do you recommend them mm -hmm. same thing for my show you know like uh as it's starting to grow i'm getting more and more people that want to come on the show and you know share their story and i'm like i don't know who you are bro like you can have twenty thousand, thirty thousand, hundred thousand. but if i don't know you i'm not gonna have you come on here and like and how do you know that that's like a real following too like yeah you know sometimes so you can't tell <laughs> so uh, so it's important to do some research um yeah. before you uh you know get involved into anything that you're gonna regret so that's, well, that's your tip number two that's yeah that's tip number two because like even back in the day like i did the research and it was a lot harder then yeah but I would say the third one is, and this is something that I'm going through right now. I don't care who it is, family, friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Yeah. If, if they're not going to support you in what you're doing, they need to go. They need to go. Like, That's do probably not, the best tip. Do not take, yeah, do not, you cannot go forward or progress when you have mom that's negative, boyfriend that's negative, or whatever, you know, whoever the character is. Yeah. And because it's going to weigh you down. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough situation for people sometimes to get rid of those negative anchors in their life. Oh, I like that. But they negative are, anchors. yeah, <laughs> but they are definitely a detriment to your growth and evolution. And, you know, most people, um, they don't have bad intentions, but True. at the same time, they don't really know what it takes to be successful and to escape that matrix we were talking yeah. about. So they want you to stay in it, you know, because they're scared of you leaving and they're scared of you failing. So sometimes, you know, it's probably best to, you know, separate yourself from, from yeah. those people, you know, 
and, and it was funny because we had, I had, like I told you, I had Deanna on. And she's <laughs> like, you know, they say you're the five people you surround yourself, you're going to be like at their same level. And I say, it's, it's funny true. people say that, but everybody still hangs around with their stupid friends and, you know, their, Not me. their low life this and their low life that. And like <laughs> negative, anyone that's negative or pessimistic or not supporting you, you have to cut them out like a cancer. You it, know, it, it you is. have to because it, it'll grow on you. Mm -hmm. You know, they keep on like when you were in that bad relationship, it, anything you did it would have been something negative it was like literally like i could feel i could feel like me getting sick like nauseous yeah. like yeah every time like i would go back i i felt nauseous i was like what the hell are you doing like yeah you know so but you have to break the cycle and i'm not saying it's going to be easy because i mean i've even cut off family like yeah like my own siblings because they are they're I'm if I if, if I'm trying to progress and you're holding me back like then this is not going to work you know yeah. so that would yeah that's definitely tip number three like you got to just grow a thick skin and yeah. block it all out yeah by any cost yeah I agree. <laughs> those are some really really good tips guys I really hope you enjoy today's show uh, I'm really grateful again uh, Danny for Rose for, <laughs> for your insight your wisdom guys make sure you follow Danny on her Instagram. That's Danny.Rose. Make sure you type two I's. Mm -hmm. uh, XOXO. <laughs> Check out her website at DannyRose.com as well as her store at PrettyBaddies.com. Subscribe to the Dreams to Reality podcast on YouTube. And we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.